Kubla Khan by Samuel Taylor Coleridge, published in 1816. From the introduction of Coleridge's Ancient Mariner and Selected Poems by Frederick H. Sykes. Kubla Khan is the remembered fragment of a dream. All that we know about it is contained in the note Coleridge prefixed to it in the pamphlet of 1816. In the summer of 1798, Coleridge says 1797, but this seems to have been a slip of his memory, the author, then in ill health, had retired to a lonely farmhouse between Porlock and Linton, on the Exmoor confines of Somerset and Devonshire. In consequence of a slight indisposition, an anodyne had been prescribed, from the effects of which he fell asleep in his chair, at the moment that he was reading the following sentence, or words of the same substance, in Purchase's pilgrimage. Here the Khan Kubler commanded a palace to be built, and a stately garden thereunto, and thus ten miles of fertile ground were enclosed with a wall. The author continued for about three hours in a profound sleep, at least of the external senses, during which time he has the most vivid confidence that he could not have composed less than from two to three hundred lines, if that indeed can be called composition, in which all the images rose up before him as things, with a parallel production of the correspondent expressions, without any sensation or consciousness of effort. On awaking, he appeared to himself to have a distinct recollection of the whole, and taking his pen, ink, and paper, instantly and eagerly wrote down the lines that are here preserved. At this moment he was unfortunately called out by a person on business from Porlock, and detained by him above an hour, and on his return to his room, found to his no small surprise and mortification, that though he still retained some vague and dim recollection of the general purport of the vision, Yet, with the exception of some eight or ten scattered lines and images, all the rest had passed away, like the images on the surface of a stream into which a stone has been cursed, but alas, without the after restoration of the latter. Opinion will ever vary as to its poetic worth. Coleridge himself professed to consider it rather as a psychological curiosity than as a thing of any supposed poetic merits. To Lady Caroline Lamb he repeated it, so enchantingly that it irradiates and brings heaven and Elysian bowers into any parlour when he sings or says it, and it has been a sort of touchstone of romantic taste ever since. It supremely illustrates that sense of musical delight with the power of producing it, which the poet declared to be a gift of the imagination that can never be learnt. Kubla Khan by Samuel Taylor Coleridge in Xanadu did Kubla Khan a stately pleasure dome decree, where Alf the sacred river ran through caverns measureless to man down to a sunless sea. So twice five miles of fertile ground with walls and towers were girdled round, and there were gardens bright with sinuous rills where blossomed many an incense-bearing tree, and here were forests ancient as the hills enfolding sunny spots of greenery. But oh, that deep romantic chasm, which slanted down the green hill athwart a cedarn cover, a savage place, as holy and enchanted as e'er beneath a waning moon was haunted by woman wailing for her demon lover. And from this chasm with ceaseless turmoil seething, as if this earth in fast thick pants were breathing, a mighty fountain momently was forced, amid whose swift half-intermitted burst huge fragments vaulted like rebounding hail, or chaffy grain beneath the thresher's flail. And mid these dancing rocks, at once and ever, it flung up momently the sacred river, five miles meandering with a mazy motion, through wood and dale the sacred river ran, then reached the caverns measureless to man, and sank in tumult to a lifeless ocean. And mid this tumult Kubler heard from far ancestral voices prophesying war. The shadow of the dome of pleasure floated midway on the waves, where was heard the mingled measure from the fountain and the caves. It was a miracle of rare device, a sunny pleasure dome with caves of ice. A damsel with a dulcimer in a vision once I saw. It was an Abyssinian maid, and on her dulcimer she played, singing of Mount Abora. Could I revive within me her symphony and song? To such a deep delight twould win me, that with music loud and long I would build that dome in air that sunny dome, those caves of ice, and all who heard should see them there, and all should cry, Beware, beware! His flashing eyes, his floating hair, weave a circle round him thrice, and close your eyes with holy dread, for he on honey-dew hath fed, 
and drunk the milk of paradise.